This week's U.S. drought monitor shows a reduction in dry areas of Nebraska. 72% of the state is in no intensity classification. That's the most since October. To look ahead at potential weather scenarios during the growing season, we talked this week with Iowa State's Elwin Taylor. Elwin was on UNL's East Campus Wednesday as part of a seminar on weather and crop risk management. We sat down with him before his presentation and began by asking for an outlook of current conditions across the Corn Belt. It's been an interesting winter across the Corn Belt as a whole, especially the western half with the very warm February, following a foggy at times January. Of course, the fog in January gets our farmers excited. They've got a folklore that says, if you have January fog widespread, you're going to have widespread too wet at planting time. Well, there's some logic to that. If we get fog in January, you're seeing the breath of the Gulf of Mexico. What's that doing coming into the Midwest in January? It's not supposed to get here till March. And if it's early, maybe the wet season will be starting early. So there's some logic to that. Maybe we will be seeing a wet planting uh, season. Uh, next thing people were concerned about uh, in the center of the Corn Belt was the warm February. No one was concerned in Nebraska or in the Dakotas. We often get warm Februaries and we get them because of Chinook effect. Well, the Chinook was extra strong this year and so it was reaching into Illinois and even Indiana and bringing them the warmest February they've got on record. But that's because Chinook is a common, but not commonly this strong. But then again, it isn't commonly bringing that much snow to California and that much rain to end their drought with a lot more moisture than they probably would like to have. We wouldn't have had to have reports from them to know what was happening. We just had to see how strong the Chinooks were. So are you of the mind that uh, El Nino is going to be a player this year? El Nino has been going on down on the west coast of South America, and particularly up near the equator for Ecuador, Peru, down northern parts of Chile at least, and they've been getting their seasonal rain. Well, uh, close to Christmas time is when they expect it. That's why they called it El Nino in the first place. It means Merry Christmas down in their part of the world. Actually, it means in honor of the Christ child. And so they call it their El Nino rains or their Christmas rain. It's a little heavier than usual, more than their normal three or four inches. But is it strong enough it's going to influence the Midwest? Actually, it looks like it isn't. And maybe right now, it is fading a bit. We're seeing some signs of weakening on the satellite pictures. So we think that the chances are El Nino will go away, but that's just chances. It may not. We'll have to watch it till it's gone. But will it switch to La Nina and be right back to the problems that some places had? Uh, well, that La Nina, of course, is what brought us the first drought in the Corn Belt since 88 and that was 2012 for most areas. Some places it was 2011, some it was actually 13, but most of these big droughts take two or three years as they progress. And like all of the Midwest droughts, uh, the drought of 12 started in 2010 in North Georgia and the Carolinas and then spread. That's what happened with the drought of 88, 80, 87, going into 88 started there. And that's what happened with the Dust Bowl. That's what happens with all of the droughts. They start in North Georgia, so we're watching their dry place on the drought monitor. If that's growing, not gone, but not just still there, but growing come May, then expect drought to be spreading and getting into the Eastern Corn Belt uh, in this season, but probably not further east than Ohio, maybe Indiana. So are you concerned about the growing season this spring then? Uh, this spring? This spring into summer. Uh, this spring, of course, just with the possibility of excess moisture. And into summer, I think we've got good soil moisture in the subsoil over most of the Corn Belt, so the moisture is good. The temperature, we don't know. It's got some un, uh, unknowns that go with that. We'll just have to wait and see. Remember, it'll be the temperature more likely than the rainfall that controls our crop this year.
we've talked about volatility many times before when we've sat down. With three or four good years here put together by the Corn Belt, do you expect more volatility to come back in? We do anticipate that we're entering a time of volatility. We haven't had great volatility since we got past the drought of 2012, but we will be reaching the cycle, if you will, of volatility over the next four years. And then we would anticipate as we get close uh, to uh, 2020 that the volatility will just be increasing and increasing, reaching its peak around 2025. Yes, this will be an 18 year long period of volatility of yields, annual volatility, not the kind they talk about in Chicago, which is hour by hour and minute by minute.